The Destruction of Sennacherib by George Gordon Byron originally appeared in 1815 in Hebrew Melodies, a collection of poems intended to be set to music of a religious nature. This relatively short narrative poem is based upon the Old Testament accounts in the Second Book of Kings and in Chronicles of the siege of the Jewish city of Jerusalem in 701 BCE by the Assyrian king Sennacherib. Assyria was an empire in ancient Mesopotamia, covering parts of modern-day Turkey, Syria and Iraq. Sennacherib, ridiculing God for his impotence in protecting his people, had sent his army to take Jerusalem. As a consequence, God dispatched the angel of death to destroy them in an act of divine retribution. At the time the poem was written, Britain was at war with Napoleonic France, and so its subject would have struck a chord with its readers when it was published. The poem comprises six stanzas. Each stanza is a quatrain, written in rhyming couplets, A-A-B-B, with an almost unfaltering bass metre of anapistic tetrameter, diddy-dum, 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 which evokes the sound of the hooves of galloping horses. There's extensive use of polysyndeton throughout, with about half of the lines beginning and, which helps to pile up the events one after the other. Each line is end-stopped. There is no enjambment, which makes the rhythm quite jaunty. Furthermore, anapistic tetrameter is often used for comic verse, which would appear to be at odds with the subject of the narrative, i.e. the heavy defeat of the army and the bereavement of the soldiers' wives. There is a sense that, even though there is a significant loss of human life, this, in the eyes of the poet, is justice, and therefore not a tragedy. Sennacherib's unprovoked aggression and ridicule is an act of hubris, or excessive pride and defiance, an affront to God that is swiftly punished through nemesis, or destruction as divine retribution. Some of the language and syntax or sentence structure in the poem is archaic and echoes the style in which the Bible is written, enhancing the sense that the unfolding events are following a just course. This is further highlighted by the poet's extensive use of similes, which compare the events in the story to the natural world. The rigidity of the poem's form adds to the narrative's feeling of relentless movement towards its inevitable resolution. The poem begins in medias res, or in the middle of the action, which helps set the dramatic tone, as the Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold. Here, the Assyrian refers to Sennacherib, the king of Assyria himself, as he leads his army and the phrasal verb came down means to make a sudden attack on something rather than to physically come down from a height. The simile, like the wolf, suggests that he is like a predator approaching innocent defenceless animals such as sheep in their fold or enclosure. Psalm 23 or the Lord is my shepherd alludes to God's followers being seen as a flock. This allusion immediately signals to the reader who the good guys are and who the bad guys are in this story. At the moment, though, Sennacherib's cohorts, or his army, appear to be the ones with the advantage, as they are described as gleaming in purple and gold. These colours allude to the luxuriousness and royal associations of their battle dress. Purple was a very expensive colour at the time because the dye was painstakingly extracted from marine snails and only royalty could afford to have it produced. The fact that their spears have a sheen or a shine indicates that they are well cared for and the simile, like stars on the sea, emphasises the sheer number of weapons that the soldiers bear. Note the sibilance in sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea, the hiss of which perhaps evoking the idea of the threat that they embody. 
Deep Galilee is an allusion to a small inland sea in Israel and is the area where Jesus grew up. Not only does this help to locate the narrative, but also, when the blue wave rolls nightly, suggests that the progression of the army is inexorable and their engulfing of the city inevitable. The imagery in the first stanza is lush and exotic, and there is a significant number of assonant long E sounds, which makes the tone quite forceful. All of this enhancing the idea that the men certainly seem to have everything in their favour, as they are well equipped and in great number. But perhaps it is all just for show, and their appearance of might is superficial. The second stanza consists of two contrasting similes, the juxtaposition of which highlights the way in which the fortunes of the army are overturned in the space of less than 24 hours. On the eve of the battle, that host with their banners, or Sennacherib's army with their battle flags, at sunset were seen. One moment they are like the leaves of the forest when summer is green. The comparison with summer and green leaves suggesting not only that the soldiers are many, but also that they are young, strong and at the height of their powers. But, like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown, that host on the morrow lay withered and strown. In the blink of an eye, the army is dead. Like autumn leaves, they are withered, with the life drained out of them and strown, an archaic form of the word strewn, or untidily scattered over the ground. What has happened to kill them all off so quickly? Where is the battle? The way in which Byron structures this stanza is worth exploring. Note the syntactic parallels in these lines which use similarity of structure to communicate the contrasting fortunes of the army. The placement of the similes in a fronted adverbial give them pride of place at the beginning of the sentence and suggest that it is the manner of their deaths which is important, rather than the deaths themselves. The use of similes relating to the passing of the seasons also suggests that their deaths are inevitable, reflecting, as it does, a natural law. The third stanza reveals the reason for their sudden defeat. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. The angel of death is a figure associated with God's vengeance. Byron employs alliteration of plosive b sounds in these lines with blast and breathed, which enhance our understanding of the angel's destructive power, as well as alliteration of voiceless f sounds in face of the foe, which evoke the sound of his breath. The soldiers and their horses do not die a violent death as they are all fast asleep when it happens, their eyes waxing deadly and chill. The verb waxed here means grew, but it also has connotations linked to candle wax, which is cold and white. The fourth line describes the actual moment of their death, and their hearts but once heaved and forever grew still. Note the alliteration of the aspirated h sounds in hearts and heaved, which mimics the weighty movement of their final heartbeat. Byron chooses to begin three of the four lines of this stanza with the conjunction and. This polysyndeton has a rhythmic anaphoric effect that is carried over onto the first line of the fourth stanza and communicates the way in which the events take place so quickly. The fourth stanza describes the horses which have been killed. Note the way in which the poet refers to the corpse of the steed, using the definite article in the singular rather than in the plural here. This is an example of something called a synecdoche, where a part of something is used to refer to the whole. In this case, one horse represents the many who have been mercilessly struck down by the angel of death. There is a sense that if there is any regret, it is for the deaths of these animals, which are often considered noble, and this is alluded to in the word pride, which refers to the horse's dignity as well as the fact that the poet chooses to describe them before going on to describe the slain men. The rest of the imagery in this stanza revisits that of the first, where the blue wave rolls nightly on deep Galilee, 
with the polyptotonic repetition of rolled, as well as allusions to foam, spray and rock-beating surf. Earlier, an image of purposeful movement. Now there is nothing but stillness as there rolled not the breath of his pride. The rest of the description is a graphic image of the horse's struggle to breathe during the last moments of his life, as the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and cold as the spray of the rock-beating surf. The fifth stanza moves on to describe the corpse of the rider, Byron once more using a synecdoche with the definite article the, along with the singular form of the noun rather than the plural, to refer to all the soldiers. The man is obviously dead, he is distorted and pale, and has been lying there long enough for the dew to be able to settle on his brow. In a reversal of the imagery in the first stanza, his armour or mail is now rusty and all the paraphernalia of war has been abandoned. The poet uses a transferred epithet to describe the tents which are all silent, and the banners or battle flags are now alone, these images serving to convey the sheer desolation of the battlefield. The way in which Byron uses verbs with the prefix un to describe the lances as unlifted and the trumpets as unblown highlights not only the way in which these instruments have lost the purpose of their existence, but also that not one single act of war was carried out before the angel struck. The final stanza focuses on the aftermath of the battle. The soldiers' widows are left behind in the Assyrian capital of Ashur, to grieve for their lost husbands. The way in which they are loud in their wail is an allusion to the way grief is demonstrated in the Bible. The Temple of Baal is a reference to the Temple of Bel in Palmyra, Syria, in which the Mesopotamian god Bel was worshipped alongside the moon god Aglibol and the sun god Yahibol. In other words, the Assyrians are worshippers of idols, or false gods, which are now broke and they have been punished for this idolatry, their idols destroyed. The poem finishes with the exclamatory couplet, And the might of the Gentile, unsmote by the sword, hath melted like snow in the glance of the Lord. In other words, the sheer strength or might of the Gentile, or the Assyrians, as the adjective Gentile is used to describe those who are not Jewish, is unsmote, or is not struck down by the sword. Rather, it is the glance of the Lord through the instrument of the angel of death, which is able to melt it like snow. Just as sure as snow is to fall, it is to melt. The thaw is an inevitable natural phenomenon. Although the army seems mighty, it is helpless against God, who is even more powerful, and this simile highlights the ease of the army's destruction. God does not need weapons or armies. His might is such that all it takes is a glance, or the briefest of looks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on English language topics and exam techniques, and English literature texts.